Hello, my name is Katie Groves, and this is the millionth time I'm trying to record this video. I'm very, very nervous, and this is my first time speaking out about my ritual abuse and mind control experiences in a video. And so I'm having a hard time staying present, but I'm going to do my best this time to make this the last time and make this video about some basic steps to freedom from ritual abuse and mind control. I can only speak from my experiences. I'm one of many, many survivors of these kinds of abuse, and so I can't tell you what you need to heal if you've been through this or are going through this, but I can tell you what I have done to heal. Now, I'm not perfectly healed by any means. I've only been recovering for about three and a half years, but I have learned a lot in this time, and I am no longer enslaved to the cult. I still have programs that make my life very difficult. I was reprogrammed for dysfunction after trying to fight my way out as a child, and that means that I have self-sabotaging tendencies, self-harming tendencies, and um, agoraphobic tendencies that make things very hard for me in my recovery. But I have been able to detach from the people who abused me, relocate to a new area, and start establishing a real sense of self and finding out who I really am underneath all of the abuse that I endured. I'm not going to go into details of my abuse in this video, that's not the purpose of this one, but I do hope to make a video sharing my story in more depth at some point soon, also for healing purposes. So, basic steps for me for breaking free. The first one, biggest one, would be physical separation from the cult. I had to separate from my immediate biological family, from the people that I knew as friends, as lovers, as acquaintances, pretty much everyone that I interacted with back in my hometown was programmed. Everyone I was close to was in the cult. And so I had to relocate um, and I had to cut off contact with all of those people. This was a process for me. It took me several months, upwards of a year to realize that everyone I knew was unsafe. And so I continued to have contact with people in various means from afar that or damaging to me that reinforced some of my programming. But over time, I was able to deprogram myself enough to finally cut off all contact with the people that I knew to be programmed. And that has probably been the most helpful thing that I've done. Um, the other big piece of it was sobriety. Um, like I said, I was reprogrammed for dysfunction. And while I was fed drugs and alcohol from, probably from birth, you know, maybe even in the womb, I was unaware of this until I was reprogrammed to be a drug addict in my day-to-day -day life, to be consciously aware that I was using um, hard drugs and to live that lifestyle. So I had to get clean and sober because I didn't have the, um, I didn't have the space, I didn't have the awareness around my programming that would enable me to um, become aware of it and heal until I got physically sober. The drugs and alcohol clouded my mind and kept me trapped um, in unconscious thinking, in unconscious programming. So. For me, my way out was twofold. I had to physically relocate and I had to get clean and sober at the same time. So I was able to go to a treatment program far away. Thankfully, I had dissociative parts that were aware of what was going on, obviously, and they were able to help me get out. And I, as the host self, was completely unaware. So I relocated and I started rapidly awakening as I physically detoxed from drugs and alcohol. I um, discovered 12-step uh, programs. I've had trouble with those because of my cult trauma. I'm not saying anything about 12-step programs. I'm sharing no opinions about that, but I will say that it was triggering for me because of some of the things that I've been through, some of the things and it was familiar to me um, and uh, in ways that were not helpful. And so I did have trouble with that and I have struggled with that a lot and I still am struggling with that, but I have been able to stay sober by attending those groups. And that has helped me tremendously, having that support. I can't say that I found the most support around ritual abuse in that community, in those communities, but I have found some and I have met some people. And um, that's where I met my current partner, who is an absolutely wonderful man, who has helped me tremendously in healing myself. Finding people outside of the cults was probably the third biggest thing. Finding people I could talk to, finding people that I could trust. Trust is not an easy thing to come by, especially when you've been abused in the ways that I've been abused, it's unbelievably hard to get, you know, to get through the, ah, I don't have the words, I'm speechless, but how difficult it is to trust people after going through those experiences. But 
it is possible, it has been possible for me to start to trust. And um, my partner is perhaps the only person that I trust, but that's okay. I have one person, that's a miracle. And um, another big piece of this healing process for me has been um, a uh, relationship with a higher power of my own understanding. That's something people talk about in recovery from addiction, and that's something that's been primary avenue of healing um, from ritual abuse and mind control as well. The um, unconsciousness that mind control programming creates is uh, not a spiritual state of being. And by spiritual, I'm not referring to any form of organized religion. That for me is highly triggering. That's not something that I can do as a cult survivor, but it's something else entirely, something that goes beyond belief, something that goes beyond the human mind. It is, by its very definition, something beyond human thinking. So I had to find a higher dimension of consciousness. I had to find a higher connection, or a connection with something greater than me, greater than my thinking, that is also synonymous with my true self, the real me, the me that was hidden in all of the mind control programming, the me that was compartmentalized and fragmented through the creation of dissociative identities, the me that was hidden, and the me that fueled me to break free, the part of me that was so thirsty for freedom and is so thirsty for health and wellness and a connection with something other than the horrific satanic ideologies of the cult. But I was willing to do almost anything to get out. I don't know if that sentence made sense. I switched there for a second. I do still have many dissociative parts. I still do struggle, like I said, with programming, but I'm able to make this video and that's a miracle. Um, you know, another big piece of it, like I said, finding safe people is talking about it. You know, I had to have people that I could talk to about this stuff, and most of the people I encountered weren't safe. And I encountered many people who were actually in the cult and programmed in the area that I relocated to who turned out to be unsafe. And I've had to make a lot of mistakes, and I've had to go through a lot of trauma in the last three and a half years um, to... Uh, in my search for people who I could talk to safely about this, but I did find them, and I have found some. And um, breaking that rule, that programming that says I'm not allowed to tell anyone what's going on with me, that's also probably number one. I think I've said every, all of this is number one in primary because they all work together. All these tools work together hand in hand. The last thing I'm going to share, because my video is about to time out, and if it only lets me do a few minutes of recording at a time and I find video editing, you know, very um, triggering for me because some of the things I had to do in the cult, so I'm just making this raw, unedited. So um, the last thing I'm going to share, the biggest tool has been listening to myself. However, I have to honor myself. However, I have to deprogram the ways I was taught to ignore, belittle, shame, and abuse myself, I have to overcome. And I do so through many means, and I'm going to talk about those in another video very soon. Um, journaling, speaking out, going to recovery groups, those have all been very helpful for me. I've not been able to find a good therapist, and that is something that causes me a lot of grief. As many of you know, therapy can be one of the hardest things for ritual abuse survivors to do because the people who programmed us we're often psychologists. Um, that, you know, there was even a member of my biological family who was one of my biggest, you know, worst perpetrators who is a practicing psychologist. And so it makes me very hard, you know, it's very hard for me to trust therapists. But like I said, I have found safe people and I have found outlets and I have found a higher power and I have found the dedication and the determination within myself to do this one day at a time as long as I live because I do not wish to be a slave. I do not wish to endure the horrible things ritual abuse survivors have to endure ever again. Thank you.